Hello, we are now in Rugby and we're going to be moving just around this area for the next couple of weeks and I always think that the best part of a town is usually found along its canal. So we're right in the middle here, just behind me is a cycle path which goes right to the centre of Rugby in eight minutes. And although there is a road close by and you get the buzz of traffic, we've got these bushes all the way down and they're laden with blackberries and elderberries. So I'm going to be able to do loads of foraging and loads of cooking with them. Um, there's lots of moorings. The towpath is really nice. It's quite buzzy because on the other side is one day moorings and a water point and um, we have Willow Wren up the road which a lot of you will know of and Hillmorton locks down the road so it's a really busy little area. We're going to go and explore Rugby, there's a zero waste shop there and a market and an art gallery so plenty for us so yeah watch this space and we'll see what we can find out about Rugby. We're just going past this church in Rugby and somebody's been weaving bits into the fence. What a nice idea! Although it's slightly Blair Witch. <laughs> it runs all the way down. It's great. Just watch the craft in down there. Nice, impressive art gallery. First port of call, as ever, was to the local history section, and we found this setup of a Roman street market with a stall. That I'd be quite happy to buy things from today if it was there and upstairs in the landscape painting section we found this one of Brighton and we know exactly where that was painted from and then a little one of Dieppe and we lived here for many years also so it made us feel right at home don't have to tell you I was standing, you were there, two worlds collided, and they could never tear us apart.
And in the evening, we found a craft beer place and Henry finally got an IPA, very happy. And then we also discovered the Baco Lounge, great food, nice staff, wacky decor. And although none of the staff knew who this was, I bet you do. I'm just staying on my mouth, so I don't lose this. They must be strong magnets, eh? 400 kilograms of lifting weight. Wow. That's even the strongest you can get. And great for lifting out shopping trolleys. This ain't even the strongest. Yeah. yeah. Well, not precious, but nice. So nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've been going for a walk down the canal and we found a fender that had just come off somebody's boat, which is very handy because we lost one last week. So we've picked it up and we hit it in the hedge and we did a what's three words. And now Henry is down here trying to find it. It's actually exactly where I'm standing. He doesn't realize that. But we're just trying to see if the what three words works. Because we, we have struggled with it a bit. I mean, it, it's good, but sometimes we struggle to use it well. Are you off, are you off the maps now, Henry? I'll put you out of your misery. It's here. It's in there. I remembered visually where it was, which seems to work better than the what three words. How'd you get back? This recipe is another of my quick and easy ones. Um, I'm going to make confit garlic. So, Confit is when something is cooked in a liquid um, until it's softened and it preserves it. You might know confit de canard, which you have in any bistro in France. Um, or confiture, which is jam. But this is going to be garlic cooked in olive oil. And you can do one head or, like me, you can do ten heads. So you need to separate the cloves from the bulb of garlic and then just peel the skin. So come back to me in an hour when I've done 10 bulbs. Sometime later, I've got them all done. I mean, obviously you don't have to do that many, but it uses the same amount of energy to do loads. Um, and I've got a nice big jar to put them in. So these are really nice once they're done you can just take them out and chop them up and mix them in with anything and chicken or um i don't know anything you can think of but it's a nice soft garlicky thing to use so all the cloves are peeled and get my olive oil so you want a good quality olive oil and you want to cover however much garlic you've got so it just comes above And now you want to put it on the lowest heat and bring it up to just under a simmer. The thing with olive oil is you never want to get it too hot. Uh, it makes it go rancid. So just bring it up to a simmer and then keeping it very, very low, cook it for 30, 45 minutes. And then once that's done, all you've got to do is pop the whole lot into a sterilized jar and it will last forever. So Henry's been making us some little areas to charge our phones that are hidden away. So we've got a USB port there and we've got another one further down the boat above that cabinet. But I don't know if you have the same problems but when the USB is plugged in our radio 
goes a bit weird. Plug it in H and we'll see what happens. So yeah, don't forget this is dab radio as well. Yeah. Right, it's all right in that chart. It's, it's fine in that sunshine charger. It's just a small contribution to your daily, you know. Um, and I've made a couple of adjustments as you can see. So, so, so the, the question is very complicated, right, here we go. isn't that the point so, with, with what Judith's asking here? Right. If, you, for instance, if you're looking at now. Um, and immediately the radio stops or it crackles and cackles, doesn't it? Sounds a bit like Donald Duck. Yeah. And I've noticed on some of my voiceovers on the videos that when it's plugged into the computer. Right. Roughly, uh, there's a fuzzy noise that comes over the back so we're trying to figure out what we can do about this so that was a basic montage of rugby as we found it and we've really enjoyed our time here i think there's a couple of things um which could have been better there's no recycling anywhere not even the supermarkets all they do is uh soft plastic um, recycling which is overused anyway so we had to cycle um, a few miles out of town to a superstore on the other side of town to get rid of our recycling last week so that's a bit of a shame nobody could tell us where there was any recycling and it's a bit of a pity that all along the side of the canal and down to a place called Elliot's Field, it's just superstores, home base and wicks and places like that. And I think it's made the, the centre of rugby suffer because it's such a nice centre. It's pedestrianised, you can meander around it, but at least 50% of the shops are shut. And it's not a pandemic thing because some locals were telling us it's been like that for ages. And which is why the council, I think, is having to put so much energy into putting on performances and things in the park and, and anything to keep people in the town. It's such a shame the farmer's market has got one person in it, um, even though the other market is really well attended. But they were the only downsides. The rest of it has been really pleasant experience and well, we should be back here in a week to pick up a very special friend who will feature in the next video. And for now, we are on our way to Calcutt Boats to have our engine service done. So we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.